Hey everybody, Hulk Rex here, and welcome to another um, Mercenary Thoughts from the Inner Sphere, episode 100, oh no, it's 205, wow, I'm getting this all mixed up. Alright, take four, or yeah, maybe it's take five, I don't know. But here we're talking about the Huron Warrior. It's a 50-ton mech, it's a 5.8.0, doesn't have jump jets, has Indo steel, and XL engines. They take its care package along with it. Well, it could be a problem. It probably is a problem, but hey, we'll get down to it here in a second. It does have 11 heat sinks. Yeah, single heat sinks. You got Indo Steel and XL engines, two high tech uh, systems on board, and you can't put double heat sinks on this thing. You could free up another ton just by putting double heat sinks on it and put more armor, which it does have 160 points, which is better than your typical Shadowhawk. And if you added another ton of armor on board, yeah, this thing would be doing pretty good. It can take a clan PPC or a Gauss rifle shot anywhere in the body, except for the head. Nobody can do that. But, you know, and then still have enough armor left over to cover your, you know, the internal juicy parts from uh, being torn to pieces. But any follow up on stuff, in it's just another store, different story. All right. Now, the uh, weapon systems on board are kind of interesting. Uh, you have a Gauss rifle in the right arm and two tons of ammo. So you got 17 tons wrapped up in a 50 ton mech. Why? I don't know. But, you know, it's like, you know, it's, it's kind of trying to be something like an enforcer, you know, in that aspect or a centurion or something. It does have an ER large laser in the left arm and a medium pulse laser in the left torso, which is another reason I'm saying I'd rather take a medium laser or two instead of a medium pulse laser. I've never been a fan of the inner sphere medium pulse laser myself. Uh, I rather have the extra three hexes and toss in, you know, another shot. So if you had two of them, you know, you can do 10 points of damage versus six. Even though you can just make a uh, point of elementals angry at you by shooting at them with it. But, you know, that's another story in itself. All right. Now, a... The problem I well, another problem I have was like it's got eleven single heat sinks. You have an ER large laser on it. Just firing it, you're heating your mech up. That's not a smart deal, especially when it's a high tech weapon system. It's advanced. I know the Compellens may not have all that stuff handy dandy with them by thirty fifty five. They might be behind the power curve because no one wants to give the Compellens anything. You know, it's like I can kind of understand the storyline behind that but in the grand scheme of things yeah it's like it needs double heat sinks because when you fire the large laser by itself you're heating up one you walk you go up two heat oh let's fire that gauss rifle you're up three on the heat scale yeah not a smart deal at all hey let's just toss in that uh, medium pulse laser all right that can, that can't be bad right no that's a bad deal so if it fires all of its weapon systems when somebody's close enough to do it, this mech is running hot. Now, if you run with it, yeah, you're even hotter. So that is a very big design flaw in it. You know, it's supposed to be a fire support mech. Uh, yeah, you can move this mech, put it in a defensive position someplace, and fire the Gauss rifle and the large laser and do some good damage with it. You know, there's nothing wrong with the damage output with it. At a distance, but uh, you might get more bang for your buck if somebody was shooting at you with, let's say, an archer with its LRMs. It would <laughs> could hurt this mech pretty good. Now you go back a couple weeks ago when I had the uh, we had our game, and we had a uh, assault mech come jumping over there, and he was like, "Ah, we're gonna tear things up." It gets in there. And it's like, I want to put my back to the cover so no one can shoot me in the back. And they're like, okay. So it, showing the left side. 
All of our mechs moved into the left uh, firing position, and we funneled all of our firepower into the left and blew out its left torso, and nothing flat. We still had a couple more mechs to shoot at it, and it was already dead because it lost its torso. And, hey, this has got XL engines. The same thing could happen to this mech, you know, pretty quickly, especially if you get a, a wolf pack of light mechs with some good weapon systems on board. You know, they'll tear this thing apart. And that happens a lot, you know. But, you know, it's got a respectable amount of damage you can put out. And when, you know, when somebody's got a Gauss rifle, you can't sneeze at that. That's going to hurt when you get hit with it. But you have to hit with it. And a mech like this is supposed to be like a fire support mech in some way. Yeah, it can get close. It, you know, you got a min minimum range is coming up when you get in somebody's face. Yes, I understand that. Uh, but this is the mech you don't want to get in somebody's face with. You know, if it does happen, yeah, you can do some damage. Now, we do have a few variants of this mech. You know, they all come in around 1500 battle value value man I, I don't know why i keep saying battle valor i got that other game on my head still stuck in the head all right we got the r4m this replaces the medium pulse laser with a medium laser okay and puts an extra ton of armor in the mech still hasn't addressed the heat sink problem you could have done the same thing just by putting double heat sinks on it but you know Still, same uh, value, BV value. Okay, it, I can understand. It's at least a step in the right direction. All right, I can give you that. Now, we got the four, the R4N. All right, now we're getting to something that's kind of interesting. Now it's going to harken back to the original design of this mech, which has the two LRM-15s, four medium lasers, and stealth armor. So this is kind of an interesting design. And it also has ECM. Okay. Now, at least they're getting around into it where uh, you have a mech that can handle uh, itself as a fire support mech. All right. Fire over targets, over obstacles, indirecting, that kind of deal. But uh, it's still, it can be fairly warm mech, especially if somebody gets in close and you get uh somebody decides they want to fire the four medium lasers and the lrms this thing's gonna cook itself then it makes yourself sit there and go could i do the same job with a catapult or an archer and is the battle uh, value very similar so would you want to run the other ones like a sex succession war mech that's been modified ripping out the single heat sinks and putting doubles in can you get the same effect with it with same with cheaper you have to do the little math is this a mech that you want to take in the battle with mm, all right then we have the r40 all right hey finally somebody said hey in 3065 has go 10 years past this point we go maybe we could put double heat sinks in thing oh really well, let's put some double heat sinks in it and but no uh, that extra ton that they have, let's just put another ton of Gauss rifle ammo instead of more armor. Okay. I'm not seeing the logic there, but uh, 16 shots with a Gauss rifle is actually pretty good. You know, especially when the life expectancy of this thing is probably going to be a glass cannon life expectancy. They design them to do a lot of damage quickly and die horribly, a horrible death. And then we got the 5L, or the R5L. Uh, this one has a light XL gyro and stealth armor and a PPC capacitor. Now this one's going to have me scratching my head going, huh? Uh, is there been... Did they drop maybe the Gauss rifle or upgrade the ER to a PPC? I don't know. Something is not making much of sense to me but you know it could be different i don't have that information handy right now i looked and i couldn't find anything about it but all right the 
RX4, which is a kind of experimental version. It has a Gauss rifle and then it has a large X pulse laser hmm. with reactive armor and a supercharger. That sounds like an interesting design. I'd like to actually see, you know, what that might entail, but you know, it's uh, kind of interesting where you got a little bit better weapon system, possibly the damage is a little bit in the same range. More heat though with the X, and obviously it was that much heat that's coming out of this mech. I would imagine they have double heat sinks with it, but you know, we don't know. I imagine someone out there will have that the data sheets on some of these things because I don't have any access to it right now. I've lost all that, so. It will be interesting to see what that's all about. Now, overall, is this a mech that you would want to take into battle? Sure, you could take it to battle. But is it one you want to, if you're a mercenary company and you want to control it, and you got your hands on salvage of one of these, and or you, somehow you picked one up, would you want to keep it? Or would you rather go and use a succession war modified centurion or enforcer in the same tonnage you know that's things you got to think about and my answer in the short term might be no probably not i probably use the sea bills i get from selling it to get myself more equipment elsewhere all right so that is it that's the huron warrior in a nutshell so I'd like to thank uh, the individuals that uh, provided me with the uh, some of the pictures that are handy here. And uh, they're a great community. So if you have any other things out there you want me to talk about or see in the future, just put it down below. Like and subscribe, share it with your friends, and we'll see you in the next one. Uh, I'll quick out.